Welcome back to the Enjoy the Walk podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you guys are active on TikTok, if you're active on Instagram, you guys know exactly who the heck we got on the show this week. Jake Hutt, PGA, uh, considers himself, uh, I'll read off the Instagram list because I love this one, passionate learner, class A instructor, Stanford University, but my favorite of all, former NCAA hockey player. I yeah, can't wait to get into that twice. one, bud. It's definitely where that, that little lettuce back there comes from. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. But uh, Creeping in. Jake, thanks for joining us, man. How are things, uh, how are things treating you? Things are good. I can't complain. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, being in golf, it's a good industry to be in during a shitty time, right? Everyone's playing golf. Everyone is, you know, if you've never played before, you're obviously going crazy, stir crazy, sitting inside. And so everyone's getting a little, everyone wants a little taste of G, you know? So it's, uh, that's, uh, that's, it's my job to make sure we don't lose those new golfers and to keep them pumped and to, you know, uh, help them out you know obviously my instagram page i've got tips and whatnot geared towards the everyday golfer keeping it simple um and so it's just it's a it's a fun time to to be a golf teacher and to help people that's what i love doing i love helping people well i tell you you touched on it there and i think you're doing the exact opposite you said losing new golfers there a little bit earlier but i think i think you're gaining new golfers through what you're doing and and, and a lot of folks that are taking this kind of new approach to the game through instagram through tiktok and and making it cool to just sit down and watch golf tips because we talked about this on the podcast far too many times golf tips used to just be you'd sit down and watch this old guy you know teach you about the game or old woman teach you about the game and it was dry it was usually on the golf channel or, or it was very limited as to you know oh hey like I can't wait to sit down and learn how to get good at golf um, so there's there, there's people out there like yourselves who are making it really really enjoyable to learn how to play the game and you know when did it first start for you when did when did these videos start kind of popping up for you in the golf industry saying you know I want to do these kind of cool different videos yeah I mean it I've only been making these videos for probably, I want to say a year and a half. It hasn't been that long. Um, but you know, the study that led up to it, I mean, I was, you know, re really researching and trying to, you know, figure out what the good information was versus the bad information was. I mean, that was, you know, I'd say seven, seven years of just hitting the books hard, studying, uh, obviously trial and error, asking questions, asking other people, watching other good golfers, playing with good golfers and, you know, getting to a point where I could boil down some more complex subjects, try and make them as simple as possible. And I've, I've been making music my whole life. And, uh, you know, me and my buddies, when we were growing up in high school, we'd make goofy rap songs. And one day I just said, you know what, why not just put a song at the end of one of these tips? And, you know, my whole thing, when I watched kind of like you were saying, when I was watching a lot of the YouTube stuff out there, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and I was like, okay, well, you know, for every YouTube video I'd watch, I'd get like, you know, one or two snippets from it. And I was like, why don't people just make eight second long videos with what matters? And I was like, okay, well, no one's doing that. So I'll just do it. And so, uh, you know, I, the first time, I mean, video one or the first time I went out filming, I remember I was, I was back at, I was in the back of, of Stanford range for probably seven hours, just mumbling over my own words. And, you know, obviously I was like, wow, this is a little, this is a little bit harder than I thought. And then I started kind of rehearsing lines and then I kind of just, you know, it ultimately, I tried to make each tip almost like a song, like a little mini song that was kind of catchy, had something to do with the tip uh, and was really short. So you could just spend seven seconds and not have to listen to someone's bullshit or someone rambling on about themselves or whatever. Just like, here it is. If you like it, whatever funny song at the end and call it a day. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's funny and it, it's, it's crazy too. Yeah. You mentioned like, that first video being just like a rough one. I think everyone who's ever tried to get into it or who even does it well and is kind of your top like quote unquote influencer can admit those first couple of videos were a train wreck to try and get through. Oh God, hard. I mean, the second that, that camera, the second you hit record and you, you have to start talking, it's like, wow, I sound like a complete idiot. So, you know, that <laughs> <laughs> definitely, I mean, the video certainly helped me um, formulate my thoughts and, and really, you know, when you're teaching someone, you have to, you have to communicate well. And I, you know, before I got into this whole golf thing, I, it's not never anything I really focused on or practiced. And now 
talking. I mean, I look at that, like I practice, essentially I practice talking all day and I, I'll watch videos of me teaching be like, wow, you said that really shitty. You didn't say you took way too long. You rambled too long. Um, and, and so, yeah, the communication to me has kind of turned into an art and I, I love just trying to cut out as many words as possible. I think there's too many words in golf. Um, you, you, you can, you can make big time changes in a golf swing without even, without having to say anything. And so that's kind of my whole goal is cut the words out, you know, give some things for, for people to swing under or over some simple cues or whatever and send them on their way. And, play better golf without having to think so much. I, I got to ask because I, I totally agree. There's far too many words in golf. And, uh, you know, if I feel like at some point in time, if you're a big golfer or a golf fan, you know, you've seen that picture where there's like a thousand words around the golfer making a swing and it's don't lift your head. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know, yep. make sure you're doing this, make sure you're doing that. What's the one thing you constantly see over and over again, like the one word you just hate the most or the one phrase that you're just so sick and tired of hearing golfers say? Oh, you know, I, the ones, yeah, you have your, your, you have your, you know, I just want to stop. Well, okay. So the most annoying thing, hands down as a coach is I just want to be more consistent. Anyone that says I want to be more consistent doesn't really understand golf. That may, that may come across as harsh, but consistency, I think most people think it, it, it's, if you make two, two changes in the way your swing looks like, you're going to be all of a sudden consistency is a, it's a, it's a skill. Are you able to, um, essentially, you know, everyone's after this kind of, I guess, trying to re build one motion. Good golf is a series. When you measure guys playing on tour, I think Mark Bull uh, was talking to Baden from Skillist about how you want variability in your movement. You don't want to try to make one golf swing, you know, the ability to control low point on uneven lies and how to, you know, if the ball's above your feet, you have to, you want variability if you want consistency and people are after this like magical golf swing it doesn't exist. And so a lot of what I preach is just getting students to do simple tasks. I'll spray a line in the ground and say, can you hit the line? Can you hit the line with your foot? You know, with the line above your feet, below your feet, we'll draw a line in sand. Can you hit the line? Can you shift your pressure forward and hit the line backward and kind of change it up and just, you know, can you hit a shot left? Can you hit a shot right? Can you keep the face open? Can you keep the face closed? Can you curve the ball? Can you hit it low? Can you hit it high? Um, obviously the more of those different variables you can control, the more shots you have in the bag, but how, you know, how students do it, I, I try and have it be much more of a me guiding them here, sit under a tree, go, you know, hit a hit, hundred shots under the tree. I don't give a shit how you do it. If you're doing it right, you're going to have some shaft lean and, you know, less, I hate drawing lines and like, I can't stand doing the whole, the swing comparison to this person and your left arm needs to be here and your right arm needs to be there. I hate that. It certainly works for some, but I I'm, I'm trying to get rid of it completely where I'm talking more getting students to do tasks, swing out of the noodle over the noodle, hit, cut, hit, draw, send me your practice, go play. Yeah. I mean, and when we talked about it before we got on air too, and I think it's such a big component, like we were talking back and forth about um, the inconsistencies I was having with, you know, this, the score versus the tournament score. And, you know, you, the first question you asked was, well, how many, how often do you play tournament golf versus, you know, just kind of competitive golf with your buddies or just kind of leisure golf. And I was like, well, honestly, two or three times a year. And you're like right there. Boom. There, there it is. Obviously you're yeah. not going to have the tournament score that you do when you're just going out and playing. And I think the same goes for the, for those people dying for that quote unquote consistency is like, well, just go play more. And, and, and the more you make the repetitive swing and figure out, well, that's how I make a draw swing or, and that's how I hit a cut. The more you're going to understand how to do it more often. And the more the body's going to understand how to do it easier. Yeah. So, I mean, I do a lot of playing lessons now. I, I haven't, I haven't given a range. Uh, I haven't given a lesson on a range and six months and what I've really had fun a lot of fun doing is following students around on the golf course and you know I'll bring my foot spray out there and we're just they hit a shot you know it's it's why did the shot go bad you either hit the ground in the wrong place your face was too open or you hit the club face in the wrong place and you know simple as that okay the ball went to the right we need to close we may get into path a little bit but you know you can get you can get someone hitting some really cool shots uh just by asking them the right questions you know okay so Student has a slice, you know, it would be all right. Swing under the stick and try and hit a snap hook. Close the club face as much as you possible. Okay, perfect. You hit one hard left. You hit one hard right. I'm going to let you mess around in the next three holes. And I just, you know, we're going to play around with the club face. Might kind of play around with their hands, explain to them, okay, a little bit more flexion at the top. That may help close the face. 
or you may just twist the face more down. Just tell them how to, how to do the things. And, and we as humans, we know how to hold shit. We know how to twist something in one direction or the other. Contact may not be perfect, but it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, I had seen the other day, he was, you know, hitting all these shots. He was hitting the ground all over the place, right? And some were thin, some were fat, and you know, he hadn't been playing golf for very long. And take out the foot spray, spray the line in the grass, make two practice swings, all right? That was too far forward of the line, too far back. Then, you know, throw the ball down and do your best. The only way to improve a skill is to practice that skill, right? So I try and boil things down to those three things. Like, can you hit the ground where you want? Can you just take out a, a club and just rip that, you know, flower off the ground or, or spray a line? Can you, can you just, I don't care how you do it, can you do it? Most people can't, and they never practice it either. Uh, and then, obviously, the other thing is, can you keep the face open, or can, can you close the face? Can you curve the ball right, left? Uh, and then, obviously, the contact. Let's spray the face. Can you hit the middle of the club face? And 99.9% .9 of people can't do any three of them, and they've never practiced any three of them. It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> They're working on keeping their left arm straight and their head down. It's like, well, what hits the ball, you idiot? Like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> It does. It is crazy because if you think about other sports in comparison to the way we practice golf, it's so, dare I say, backwards in the way that like we're, we're using a stick with a face to hit a ball in a certain direction, yet we're worried about everything else. Now, I, I, I get it. Pitchers, they have the motion and everything and everything gets – but, you, you know – when when it's when it's talking about the golf swing, I feel like, and maybe you can relate to this into your some of your hockey experience too. You know, if you're trying to get a hockey puck to go a certain direction, I feel like you're just hitting shots until you figure it out. Not how your how your arms are leading into the stick and things like that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you, maybe they teach it that way too. I I just don't know that other side of things, but I feel like it's backwards in golf. Well, it, yeah, I, I would say you know. The, you have to you have to get past those first steps first. You have to go past what you call the fundamentals. And my, you know, again, my fundamentals would be ground contact, face contact, face direction. And once you you have all these you know all these fifteen handicaps that are worrying about things that only a tour pro should worry about in terms of the micro movements and whatnot. Uh, when you know they're going to get the most benefit from just sticking with you know three really simple things and getting better at that. And you know. The hard part about that is it's not all that much fun to practice hitting the ground over and over again. And that's why, you know, in, in, when you're training a kid, you have, you know, AccuStrike makes a great product that leaves a mark where you hit the ground. You just tell a kid, hit that line. I'm just going to, I'll be in the other room for the next three hours. And the kid that sits there just whacking the line, you know, a kid, you know, kid will have fun with that. A grown up, it's not quite stimulating enough. And people want to over intellectualize the golf swing. But in reality, if you, if you really want to make strides, you have to train like you're, you know, like you're a six year old and it's just not, it may not all be, be that fun, but you're going to really get a lot out of just being, you know, a two year old and hitting a line 50 times a day. I would argue that's better for any golfer than going out and being told how to move. Yeah, There's no, I, I, mean. I totally agree. <laughs> I mean, it, it's like you said, I mean, it's just how, how do you teach the quote unquote fundamentals, um, you know, of, of positions when, when a kid, a lot, most kids aren't going to understand that, like you said, plain and simple, but you can teach the, you know, the way you teach fundamentals of, you know, where you strike it, how you strike it and where the ball is going. That's easy for a kid to understand. Imagine teaching a kid how to walk like we teach, a, like we teach people how to play golf. People oh, wouldn't boy. be able to walk till they were till they were eight, or ever. Think about putting your right <laughs> foot, it, or or literally, people. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to walk. I mean, the way I, some, like you said, the way some golf is is taught, it's just okay. Perfect example. You know, me, I've been constantly trying to fix my takeaway. Right, I go and if go on YouTube, how to fix or how to like perfect takeaway. This or that. You're seeing 15, 20, even twenty five minutes of a video of a one simple move you get five minutes into it you're just like all right I, i've had enough i'll figure it out it just needs yeah. to go it just needs to yeah. go back to the simplicity of like the eight seconds exactly it's just like it, exactly what you're saying the, the takeaway yeah the takeaway i mean there's some people that think the takeaway is everything there's some people that really don't care and for me i i look at ball flight first and if you're you know if you're hitting good golf shots and you're happy with a ball flat, I don't care how far inside you take your backswing. Um, there's just, if there's one thing I've learned, you know, there's, there's too many variables in human movement to ever really diagnose or dissect and say, well, this is causing that, or that's causing that. Um, 
and even so for 99% of people to hit a shot to even make contact with the ball, they're, they're, you're going to revert back to your old pattern every single time on the golf course. And most people don't have time to change that, nor does it really make that big of a difference in my opinion. If you're, you know, fighting for your tour card or whatever, and, and, you know, it may be a different story at a higher level with people that are, you know, that have been playing the game since they were five years old and really know how to move. But from the majority of golfers, when you take, when you, when you give them freedom to move and do what they do just naturally, and you just start getting simple pieces of feedback, oh, you hit the toe, you hit the heel, try a little bit of this, try a little bit of that. You know, you can't ever say, okay, well, I, you know, I hit the toe, which is what, this far away from the middle. That was because you're your left shoulder did that. It's like, well, you'll never really actually know the cause. So why even bother? We don't give a shit about that. We're just going to tell you to change your focus a little bit more, whatever the issue is kind of back to those three things. Where did you hit the ground? Where was your face pointing? And, you know, with an iron to me, ground contact or low point control is everything. If, if, you, hit, if you can't hit the ground after the ball, you're going to be hitting fat shots forever. You're going to hit golf. So whether you, you move your focus or you try to hit, you know, you th- a lot of students, I'll just throw a leaf like three inches in front of the ball and say, try to hit the leaf. And that ends up getting their ground. You know, you're, all, you're just constantly changing the, the, the intent or where the, where the student's focused until they do what, what needs to be done. So for newer golfers, I'd say 90% of the time, they're not even trying to hit the ball because they're, they're so off with where their natural movement takes the club. If I'm noticing, and it's often pretty consistent. So I've had students, I, I, do, I teach classes at Stanford, and you know, we get students who've never – they've never hit it. They've never held a club. And so, you know, on day one, I'm just saying, I don't care how you hold it. Just start swinging it. And, and, you know, we have three inch tees and I'm going to spray everyone has foot spray, spray your club face and try to get the T the indent just somewhere in the middle of the club face. I don't care how you do it. Just play around the whole time. You just play around, make, make 50 swings, no ball. And each swing they're getting feedback. They're seeing where the mark is. And I'm saying, okay, adjust it, either swing further to the outside or adjust your focus more outside, more inside until you get it in the middle. And, each rep they're learning and they're actually you know they're they're letting the body self-organize their grip don't don't care how they're holding it it's just learning to swing that and obviously as you do that longer and you do it more that motor skill becomes refined and you're never thinking about it there's no verbal cues it's just hit t and everyone does it a little bit differently but that's that's the cue in, in the chunk so the chunk is you know most people learn golf through verbal cues being told what to do. And those things crumble under pressure every single time. The checklist of things, right? The laundry list. I need to stand more this way. I need to keep my left arm straight, my head still, all those things. And, and, you know, the kids who learn properly, in my opinion, they had these cues where it's okay, we'll swing more under the noodle, more over the noodle, try to hit the ball under the tree, try to hit the ball around the tree. And they just, all of these little movements get self-organized. And that's how you can play golf freely is if you're, if you're taught how to recall not with nonverbal cues, if that makes sense. Fuck, that was a lot of talking. Uh, no, I feel like I feel like you're you're spot on there because, and there was a lot there, and I want to unpack it because there was, you know, what you just ended on was like the verbal cues, and I and I think seeing things too because when you can see a shot, when you say hit it under the tree, you can always recollect after a round down the road, you know, weeks from now, months from now. Hey, remember that shot I hit under the tree? Remember how it flew? See how it went? Like where the ball actually went? And, and I and I think that's what you were getting at as far as people can recollect these things and remember how they made that thing happen as opposed to, oh, I just got to make sure my right leg isn't as far forward or as far back for this shot because it worked that one time, remember? And it's like, I just feel like you can re- remember those physical moments when you actually made something happen rather than like – a, a, a piece of body part try to be in the right position yeah well because it's, it, it's, it's funny it has... to Dante too because I think he remembers this a lot his, his he's been working on his takeaway his quote-unquote yep. well my takeaway is not as picture perfect as I like it to be sure. and he always reverts back to his little a little more inside than normal and I yep. keep telling him too dude I, I, if it works for your body and your body naturally wants to do that maybe you should just figure out how to hit the center of the club face from there and, and go from there Totally. Yeah. I mean, like you're saying, it's, it's all about meaning and words don't have a whole lot of meaning to people, but situations do and pictures do. And obviously hitting under a tree is a very, that's it. It has meaning. You've done it before. Words don't, they crumble. So we don't want to use too many of those. If, Absolutely. You know, if we, if we can. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> it's totally crazy, man. And, and I think that kind of teaching also, 
you know, you said you do a lot of online teaching and, and mm-hmm. I feel like, I feel like that really transitions well into the online side of things. Um, you know, you talked about your class at Stanford and you talked about how you do some, some playing lessons, more playing lessons, obviously than, uh, than, than the range lessons. Talk us the online side of things. First off, how do people find you to, to get online lessons if they're interested? And then, you know, what does that look like for you when, when you're kind of virtually connected? Yeah. So if you just go jcutgolf.com, there's a button there. Um, learn online and that walks you through all the steps of how to download the app. I use an app called Skillist and uh, you can also just search my name under the app Skillist. It's kind of like a marketplace there. So you can, you know, every coach has their own profile. You can get a vibe of, you know, who you, who looks cool. So it's a really, really, really cool app. They've got Skype uh, built into it. Skype or Zoom, one of the, one of the two. Um, so you can, you know, if a student has a question, you can just hop on a zoom and clarify shit. Um, but essentially, I mean, the beauty of it is I, I tell my students that it, you're kind of making a, a documentary about your golf life, your whole golf game. I want to see your practice. I want to see you playing under a little bit of pressure. So I have all my students put a, uh, uh, a phone holder on their bag and they're constantly, you know, so I'm seeing what, it, what their swing actually looks like if they're playing with their buddies, you know, I say, you know, 18 holes, give me five, no, five swings is all I need. Make sure the angle is good. And so we can actually compare because people get on the golf course and they think they're doing their, you know, whatever, whatever they're working on. But in reality for, you know, for that new movement to come out under pressure takes, it takes years and it takes, like you're saying, it takes a lot of reps working on that specific movement under that specific pressure for it to actually come out just because you tell your body or even think you're doing something there's, I mean, there's a, I'm going to say a hundred percent chance that if it's a move that you've, that you've started working on within the last eight months, you're mm-hmm. still doing your old pattern. You're still fighting the something. Like, it doesn't mean you're not moving towards something, but if you were to look at it on camera, you're, you know, what shows up on that course with your buddies under a little bit of pressure is certainly not the new thing that you've been working on on the range, even though you think it is. And so that's, it's, it's, you know, a big part of what I do is kind of, getting getting students to, to realize the reality of of how hard a change is and what really i mean i didn't start filming myself on the golf course until way later than i should have and you know i got my swing to uh, i essentially worked on technique for a straight seven years i didn't you know i didn't go anywhere near a golf course and thinking you know okay well if i get my swing to look a certain way on the on the driving range it'll show up not how it works there's that whole other phase of getting the feedback on the golf course in that, I, I could not believe how much longer even that took. It's like, okay, I, once – just getting it down on the range is one thing. Holy shit, getting it to show up under pressure on the golf course is an entirely new set of feels. And so the, I, I completely stopped going to the driving range, and I only worked on my golf swing under the pressure that I wanted to show up in. And so that involved a lot of really bad golf with you know people that were looking at me saying like aren't you supposed to be good i'm like i don't give a shit like i'm i'm here to, to i want to i want to make this change and i'm okay with the ball going all sorts of different places and that's you know that's me after spending every day all day for 8 years and you know that really put into perspective what your average golfer should be working on and obviously that's really um had an effect on how i teach yeah. And I mean, that's so spot on. It, the people have to be, and, and this is the toughest part, I think, where so many people maybe, you know, drop off the bandwagon on swing changes or just get so frustrated and say, well, you know, with, with, with maybe even their teachers and say, well, the, the, my teacher doesn't know what he's talking about because they don't, they don't buy in well enough to say, you know what, I'm okay with struggling for more time than I should be okay with because it takes some struggle time to work in a new swing change and it, cause your body's not going to like it. Your mind's not going to like it. And, and most of all, you're not going to like the results of the shots you're going to hit with it well into the first few weeks, if not months, if not, like you said, a year or so of a, of a good swing change, especially for the average golfer who only plays once or twice a week. So it, it's, I mean, it's crazy stuff like that, that I feel like people just need to, to buy into what their teachers are teaching them sometimes. You're basically <laughs> preaching to the choir here. This guy right here. <laughs> I don't like my I don't like my takeaway because I just don't like it aesthetically. I think it sucks. But like you were saying before, I I got better in a five in about five years from starting the play to score in like five years ago to now to where 
I didn't even like think about my swing at all. Sure. I just I just went out and played. I just yep. went out and played almost like every day because I had the opportunity to do that with the job that I had and just played, 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 and played and figured it out on the golf course. Kind of almost like Bubba Watson per se. He just, like you were saying, hitting it under trees, hitting it around. He just goes out and just like feels it out on the course. And that's how I got much better is just by playing it. Now I'm sitting here looking on the technical side of it. But to go back to your point, saying is it, it takes a long time. You're going to have to suck for a while in, in, in order for it to get better. But people don't realize that. And me as well, you know, I go out and try and perfect this perfect swing that sure. I don't have. And then, you know, you go to the range, say, every day, and then you're out playing Saturday with your buddies for money. And now you're focused on, I need the score. And guess what? You're going to go back to what you know works at the time yeah so i mean the way I, you know the way i would look at that obviously is a there's just because you change a movement doesn't mean you're going to be better at golf there's no guarantee that making your swing looks look better is going yeah. to change any part of your golf score um, there's 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 no there's just, there's no correlation right now at the same time is you know as you get older and obviously you know working on a golf swing is is a very it, it's an enjoyable thing trying to change something and going out there and working on something that process is very appealing to a lot of people and, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, it's understanding what the process looks like saying, okay, well, I'm, I can make this on the driving range. You're as soon as you can kind of, if you, let's say, you, you know, you have a swing model, you're trying to change a movement pattern. You can, the first time that new movement pattern shows up on the driving range, you're still about, you know, three, four years away from that showing up for one rep on the golf course. And if you're okay with that process, you understand what that looks like, then you can, you know, your expectations can, can actually be where they need to be. And most people's expectations are just so incredibly off the charts. Uh, they, you know, they just don't have an awareness uh, of the process. And, and why should they? And part of what I'm, you know, what I'm, cause, cause I've, I've been through the whole thing and I've, I've really tried hard. I mean, my only goal with this whole thing, I wanted to make my swing look different. That's all I cared about. Didn't care about score. And I was blown away with how hard it actually is spending, I mean, literally devoting my life to it. Um, and again, going back saying, okay, well, you know, your average golfer to, to get better, if that's what the average, you know, if, if you want to play better golf, a swing change is not what you need. You need, you know, you just need to understand a few simple concepts, go out with someone. That's what I'm doing now is okay. You just curve the ball right with your driver. You know, where did you hit the club face? Probably somewhere towards the heel. Your club face is a little bit open. We're going to get you to, to exaggerate. And the set, you know, a, all a golf coach does, I don't want to say all a golf coach does, but a, the most important thing a golf coach does, in my opinion, where the, the student finds the values and the coach telling the student they need to exaggerate more. Because no one thinks they need to do is no one, the exaggeration needs to happen more than every student thinks. Even, even in, in my own case, having a second set of eyes behind me is incredibly helpful where I'm looking back saying, seriously, I need to do more of that. And that's where the student always connects the dot where it's okay. The club face doesn't just need to be closed. It needs to be, it needs to be pointing behind you. If you want to actually see this ball do something different on the golf course. And that's when, you know, then you say, just trust it, trust me. And they see the ball do it. And they're like, Holy shit. That felt fucking weird, <laughs> but they are doing something different for the first time. You know what I mean? And that's like the, that's the, that's like the coolest thing ever is to get a student to, to change takes just wild exaggeration. Wild. Like for me, like my club face has always been so goddamn shut. I have to, I made a video. I was like, I have to try hitting bunker shots. Like I'm trying to hit flop shots with my driver just for my face to be square. And I'm looking at a camera <laughs> saying there is no possible way that that is true. And I mean, I can show you the videos like where literally I'm, I'm telling you my feel, my feel is like I am because I was so dumped under and I was so, my path was so far to the right face was so shut. Um, and you know, this is after watching it on film for years, watching it look nowhere near that. And then you hop to the golf course and it's just back to old patterns. And, um, so yeah, then I was like, well, I, I need to exaggerate this so much more than even I thought I'm going to hit a bunker shot here with my three iron and Holy shit. That's actually what I needed to do. It looks like a normal golf swing, but the feel was just so off the planet. It was like the trippiest thing ever. Well, it's incredible, and and I even I even catch it sometimes when when I know I'm I'm trying to do something out of the ordinary, 
the 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 s word comes into me the shank comes into me really quickly yeah there i said it people sorry for your ears cover them up i apologize (laughs) but it it comes into me because i know where i have to get the club face in order to really like feel the good pure shot i have to get really close to like where my brain's like oh that's 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 a shank swing like I, i have to get so close to that in feel to get myself to hit a really nice like tight draw that it just it, it's it's a fine line and, and I've, I've i've sent some directly right of me a couple times because the body the mind didn't trust the body of, of doing what you know it should have and it, it's it's a fickle game man it, it's crazy to try and make a swing change it truly it's, is yeah i mean we have cameras now and it's just that easy you know if you want to make a change the feedback has to be the movement and whatever movement that yeah, i get questions like i have a cup wrist at the top how do i stop cupping my wrist well i sell cup your wrist less or you know i want more right side bend and impact how do i do that well add more right side bend like so first so going back kind of to the online coaching is what i'll do is we'll isolate the movement we'll say okay you want this movement all right show, show me how to do it without a club perfect well now when you're gonna hold when you're holding a club and you're gonna hit a ball you have to feel like you're doing that times about 11 for it to actually show up. You're going to hit shots fat. You're going to hit, you might even miss the ball and you have to be okay with that <laughs> because the move, you know what I mean? And the move, yeah. if you're after a movement change, if you want to change a movement, I always ask my students, do you want to see the ball do something different or do you want to change a movement? And that in and of itself, I think really kind of gets them thinking a little bit differently saying, well, I don't, I guess I want to change a movement. They're like, okay, well then we're going to look at the movement and we don't care about the ball. And you can't care about the ball if you want to change the movement because you're not going to be able to hit the ball for a long time if you right. want to change the movement, right? <laughs> and if you're like, shit, like, wait a second. Like, are I was you like, oh, serious? <laughs> you, actually just want, you actually just want to play better golf. Okay, well, here's, here's three things. Go grab some foot spray. Here's how you close the face and open the face and go, you know, go play around with some shit. Get back to me. And because, uh, you know, most people are, are relatively consistent with their shitty pattern and you can play with it if you under – I mean, I've seen so many – I've seen so many 66s and 67s just kind of scrapped around by someone who just understood their pattern and had a decent short game and just played a slappy little, you know, whatever, slappy little heel cut and just kept it on the course all day and, you know, knew how to – like, you can play good golf. Like, there is – very rarely am I looking at – even like at a, you know, am I looking at a number that's – someone shoots like a 67, you know, from from the back tees on a respectable golf course. Oftentimes, it's not as pretty as people think. Good golf isn't – it's just it, it's boring, ugly kind of. It's just boring, ugly golf, right? You just yeah. slap it around and understand your pattern and learn how to go for there, it. Yeah, there's been there's been many times, and, and Isaiah, who who usually joins us on the pod from now and then, always says it. He goes, "If I'm going into a professional event, and, and I'm going in there saying, you know, all right, well, this guy's obviously a pro, and his swing's ugly, I know he might be one of the best." like kind of mental, not only mentally strong, but just one of the best kind of all around golfers I'm going to play with that day. Because usually the ugly swing means he's just going to put something together and chances are he's probably going to beat you because he's going to shoot like 65, 66. And like you just said, it's going to be scrappy. It ain't going to be pretty. It's not a beautiful Bob Ross painted picture, but on a scorecard, it's better than most of us. Yeah. I mean that, that golfer, you know, that golfer hasn't thought about a single thing in forever and he can step up and he knows where his ball's going all day. You know, it's the person that's, that's rehearsing their backswing. That's what he does. That's the person you want to play, right? Yeah. (laughs) Play for money, play for money. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Going back back to that statement though, where, you know, he just doesn't think about anything and just goes out and knows exactly where his, his ball is. And, you know, I kind of like kind of went back to that aspect as we were saying, you know, this aesthetic, perfect swing on camera, you know, I'm playing some, you know, playing some events with some buddies and some like local small stuff, you know, nothing too crazy, but you know, I'm sitting there worried about like, what's it look like rather than, you know, at the end of the day, it's what I'm about to do is we need to make the scorecard look good. So I went back and was just like, you know what, we need to just go out, trust what I have and just go out and play and just focus on that and focus kind of more on the number. And I'll tell you what, the confidence in my game has skyrocketed ever since I kind of flipped the switch of from aesthetic to just going out and trusting with what I have. Yeah, totally. I mean, if, if you, you know, at the same time, it, it's all trial and error. Like you, for one person, you know, making that backswing change might work and you go out and you play with it and, and you try it and you film yourself and you say, you know what, it just feels too weird. And you toss it. There's, there's no, 
I, there's no perfect equation. You know, there's nothing wrong with going out and trying to make it, making the change or trying to, you know, shallow out your downswing a little bit more. Uh, go out and mess around with it. I encourage everyone to go experiment with swing changes, see what works, but also just know that there's been a lot of good golf played with just about every, every type of golf swing, every backswing look in, you know, two inside or two, you know, Matt Wolf ask or whatever. They all, they all kind of work. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was gonna dive right into that because <laughs> I thought it was a it was a perfect kind of segue into where I, where we wanted to wrap up. It's like you know, going to the PGA this week. There's tons of favorites. There's JT. There's Brooks. There's DJ. There's Rory. Like you said, Colin Morikawa. Obviously, the kind of iconic now, uh, Matthew Wolf, and and his kind of trip trippy little swing there. You got Webb Simpson, who just seems to always linger. Um, you know, looking at all these pros and, and I think now more than ever, there's this kind of swing your swing movement. And, and, and we, I feel like we've just talked about it now over the last like 20, 30 minutes of, it doesn't have to look pretty to get the job done. Um, you know, what do you see? Ha- have you seen maybe even, you know, people come to you and say, well, I want my swing to look like that pro. Like, is, is there like a, a kind of number one pro you see just from online and, and like in-person lessons that you're like you know what i get that guy guy's name more than most i i mean i the second someone says that um depending on you know, i'd say for the majority of golfers i, I just say completely forget about it it's not going to help you play better golf um but you know for for some who, who really can move you know then we'll, we'll work towards it 100 percent. i wouldn't say there's any i just i i do some simple measurements um you know i get i find out how you know how long their arms are their upper arm, their lower arm, and, and kind of, you know, ba- loosely base that around a model, you know, if someone really wants to kind of dive into it, or we'll look at certain aspects. Again, I don't, I don't do a whole lot of, um, you know, let's make this swing look like this person's, but at the same time, I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy to go down that route because some people love doing that as a project and it's fascinating. I mean, that's, that's what I did is I said, I, I want to make my swing look as, as perfect as possible. I want to understand how Victor Hovland hits a ball. I want to understand how his forearms are moving and rotating differently in transition than, you know, a Webb Simpson and, you know, how their left arm. And there's, you know, there's kind of three, uh, Scott Kalk's really smart guy. He kind of categorized and he uses hack motion and some tools to kind of categorize three different release patterns he sees um, with the body and the forearms and whatnot. And obviously as an instructor, it's, it's important to be able to perform all of them not necessarily play with them, but be able to perform them and talk about them. And with, with all the measuring devices we have, you can certainly get a whole lot closer. And we understand these patterns a lot more. I wouldn't say there's, there's one person that people want to swing like, but I would say that kind of that new modern release where it kind of moves from flexion to extension. There's not a whole lot of, um, you know, arm movement. It's very body. It's very pivot driven. Uh, you know, obviously kind of the, the buzzwords now are rotate the body, you know, shallow the club um square the face early all those things which you know if you can do uh you know it's a it's a really you can hit some unbelievable golf shots but it's just not a reality for 99 percent of golfers to be able to rotate the body that fast and create those the separation between the lower and the upper and so a lot of what i you know a lot of what i'm doing is you know because i do teach the you know i'm all about the everyday golfer lowering that overall handicap and you know, elite golf is fascinating. And I absolutely that that's kind of the route that I started. I wanted to understand all these elite patterns and I certainly do. And, um, but for the average, I think, you know, the game is very different. It's very, it's such a different game for your average golfer than it is for the elite golfer. And, you know, we talk about like rolling the ball back in the equipment. It's like, you can you can, you might as well call it two different sports, in my opinion. I, I totally agree. I think it's just it's completely two different realms of a game. And and I think especially not not even just like the players, but the courses they play. They're completely sure. manicured and and kept differently. It's just a different way to approach a golf course than than uh, all of us the rest of us whether it's at Muni's or at our local clubs. It we're, it's not it's not tour quality for 95% of us. So I I think you're spot on with saying it's a different game. Uh you know, it's just it, it totally is. But uh while we're on the topic of those guys, who do you, who do you have this week rolling into the the year's first major PGA Championship out of Harding Park? Uh Who's your favorite? Uh, you know, I'm going to go Finau. I like Finau. I think he's, uh, you know, he, he's, he's been p- playing around with getting that swing speed up a bit. And, you know, be curious to see him, you know, if he gets out, really gets after a couple of these drives, see if he can get up there in the, you know, the 130 uh, swing speed, 180 ball speed, obviously. 
Um, you know, Brooks obviously has a how you he he's playing really good golf. He'll he'll hunt, he'll be up there. Um, and then my my buddy, so he came out. We did this little podcast uh, yesterday. The golf hawk. He's out there taking pictures behind the scenes. He's been caddying at um, SFGC for you know for forever, and he knows the he knows the Bay Area like crazy. He brought up his sneaky pick here, Kurt Kitayama. Probably never heard the name, right? Say that local again. <laughs> Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Kitayama. He's a local kid, kind of going back, tying it into environment, played a lot of Bay Area golf, uh, understands the rough, understands, you know, figuring out what club to hit in that shitty San Francisco fog. That, you know, the ball goes nowhere. It's wet. Um, and so, you know, he's a little under, you know, for everyone looking for a little value pick out there sprinkle that in there uh, i like that i like that for our bookies <laughs> from from ben peters out there we've had ben on the show before so shout out oh, to yeah. him man uh yeah i've been following him around uh, some of the pictures he's been posting man have just been awesome and i can't wait to see the work he does out there uh Insane. he's always got something special kind of cooking up in the oven so i'm excited to see what's oh, yeah. on this week definitely Awesome, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you joining us, man. It's been an absolute blast to kind of learn your just kind of your your take on the game, and and as always, man, it's uh it's one of the best I think out there. And I I encourage people to go check you guys out. And you know, other than you said your website, is that the number one place to find you? Uh, Instagram, J Cut Golf on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on TikTok. It's all just J Cut Golf. Um, but Instagram is where I spend the majority of of my effort pumping out stuff and. I've got some, I've got some YouTube videos, same thing, J Cut Golf, but the website, you know, more or less directs you to where you need to go. I'd say website and Instagram. Those are the two spots. Go there. Can't go wrong. Awesome, man. Well, again, appreciate it. Appreciate you bringing some lettuce to the show. That's, yeah. uh, that's been, that's been missing here uh, for, <laughs> for all of season one and uh, happy to start off season two with some lettuce. So, uh, absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having me. It was a blast chatting with you beauties and, uh, <laughs> You know, we'll chat again soon, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. If you have any questions, yeah. hit me up. <laughs> hey, if you ever bring it out to the East Coast, man, you know uh, you know who you can tee it up with. So, oh, I'll, I'll, one of the goals definitely is to get out there and play a shitload of golf with a bunch of different people. So you'll be hearing from me at some point when this COVID thing ends. Amen to that. We'll, uh, we'll get through it. the rest of this. Stay safe, stay healthy. And uh, as always, guys, you can find him out on Jake Hutt Golf. So. Awesome. Appreciate it, guys. Take care. <laughs> Shut it up.